So what we have here is number three from 2008. It says the oil is leaking from a pipeline on the surface of the lake, forms an oil slick whose volume increases at a constant rate of 2,000 cubic centimeters per minute, two liters per minute, but cubic centimeters per minute. Guys, DVDT, right? 2,000 centimeters per minute, DVDT. Units lead the way. The oil slick takes the form of a right circular cylinder, and the radius and height both are changing with time, and they give you the equation V equals pi R squared H in the parentheses. And everybody, for the interest of time on the video, this is what's going on. There's water, is blue, the red circular cylinder is there, and 2,000 cubic centimeters per minute is dB dt. Okay? And they say that's what's going on. And we know the equation from there is pi R squared H. So that's our general information from the header. Letter A says, at the instant when the radius of the oil slick is 100 centimeters. All right, so here we go with letter A. The radius is 100 centimeters. The height is 0.5 centimeters. The radius is increasing, which means it's positive, right? The rate of change. At a rate of 2.5 centimeters per minute. 2.5 centimeters per minute. Find the rate of change of the height in centimeters per minute. Find dH dt. All right. This is a pretty straightforward problem in that we're just going to go down the page and we're going to take the derivative because I know rH dV dt, dr dt, and I don't know dH dt. We should see in our equation there are three variables. When we take the derivative of the variables, we're going to end up with dv dt, dr dt, and dh dt in our formula. So now I just got to take the derivative. Derivative of, d, of v is dv dt equals product rule. I'm going to do f and g. Derivative of pi r squared is 2 pi r dr dt times h plus, then it's pi r squared, times derivative of h is 1 dh dt. And on an AP test, I wouldn't write it the way I did here in the blue. I'd write it just like I've done in black. It'd be dv dt equals 2 pi r h dh dt plus pi r squared dh, or dr dt, I'm sorry, on the first term, I said it wrong, dh dt. What do we know? Well, they gave us r h they gave us dv dt in the original problem. They told us dr dt, and what, what do we want? dh dt. It is simply plug and chug time. On the AP test, in the interest of time, I probably wouldn't plug in units. I know often in class we take the time to carry all the units. I would simply, in this case, be more likely just to go fast. All right. Ricky Bobby. All right. We're going to drive fast here. If you're not first, you're last. All right, so here we go. we got to do it this way, all right? And this is just a math problem. And in the interest of time for the video, if you do this math out, you get a decimal between, and I'll tell you what the AP scored, because I didn't do this problem out. The AP scored these two numbers the same. Now that means to me that this decimal should have been 0 .038 something. All right, did anybody get the something or not? I sent the All right. These are the two answers I've had. This is why I talk about carrying four decimal places in my class, because we would just put the fourth decimal place here. It would be units of cubic of centimeters per minute. Make sure you write them. And that would be the first problem. If I go an entire page here and score it and purple. DVDT, this was worth a point. If you just wrote DVDT equals 2,000, you got a point. If you wrote, oh, and DRDT equals, you had to have both of those. That was a point, the two related rates. This expression was two points. And then this answer, 0 0.038 or 0 0.039 was a point. So again, we know every AP problem is always nine points. This is four of them. So for you guys not taking the APs in my class, if you get this one, that pretty much gets you full credit.
All right, you just got to find your way to a couple other points. Pretty standard. Again, these are hard though, but a pretty standard DVDT problem, okay? A related rate. Now, the next one is actually really hard, I think. I think the next one is awfully hard. A recovery device arrives on the scene and begins removing oil. The rate at which oil is removed is R of T equals 400 T cubic centimeters per minute. All right, guys, this is DVDT too. You see it? Because it's volume per time. So you're bringing a machine and it pumps the oil off the surface of the water. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. Time is the number of minutes the device has been working. So you think about it, at time zero, there's, it takes off none. As time goes up, it, it gets fast initially, but it's definitely going to go slower and slower because we can kind of pitch square to T. Square to T on a line. We can kind of picture that parent function. We don't really need that at this time, but basically saying that as time goes, it'll go slower and slower. All right. And I have no idea what's going on. All right. So. Oil is going to leak at 2,000 cubic centimeters per minute still. Find the time T when the oil slick reaches its maximum volume. Just by your answer. All right. The second the pump gets there, and this is the hard part, I think. You guys agree that the second the pump gets there, time starts, and this is DVDT. You have oil leaking, and your pump is sucking up RT, right? Your net gain onto the water is whatever this difference is. And when RT gets greater than 2,000, what happens? It sucks up more oil than T itself. This ratio is high. So when it first gets there, the oil keeps spilling, and it's, and the, it's gonna, the pool is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then eventually what happens? It, it catches up, and it starts to shrink the pool. All right? So when do we get a maximum? When do we get maximum? When the derivative is we equals zero. So this is the hard part, I think, right in this equation. Then saying, oh, well, I know that I get a maximum. Critical points happen when the derivative is equal to zero. Well, everybody, if you plug zero in the DVDT, do you agree that then that R of T equals 2,000? So I'm going to solve that. 400 square T equals 2,000. Divide both sides by 400. Pretty sure T is 25 minutes. Now, how could I be sure? I was really not sure. How could I be sure this is right? I could use the first derivative rule, right? And make sure that it goes from a positive to a negative. And I could check it using that derivative, all right? I'm not going to today, but if you plug in a, a time less than 25 minutes into this equation, you're going to get a positive. When you plug in, and that would take a time into that, right, to that part of it for RT. And when you plug in a time greater than 25 minutes, that same, this whole expression would be negative. It would go positive to negative. Thus, this is a maximum. Does it ask us to justify? Oh, it does ask us to justify. Maybe I actually would do this. All right. Because that would be one way to justify my answer. Do you guys agree? Another way might be able to take the second derivative, right, and use the second derivative rule to justify it. I don't know if that's easier or not. But either way, I would probably say that dvdt for t less than 25 Right? What's greater than zero? DVDT for T greater than 25 was greater than zero. Thus, by first derivative rule, right? DVDT equals 25. As a max. You guys agree? Oh, shoot, I said. I meant less than zero. Thank you. And I would omit, and then, you know, that's 
worth part. That one error would have cost me a point. That error would have cost me a point. All right, and that's why we got to try to be careful. So you got three points on this one. If you had R of t equals 2,000, you got a point. You got a point for the 25, and then you got a point for this justification. All right. I would have only gotten two points there because I had my inequality law. All right. Another way to justify this, everybody, another way to justify this would have been through the second derivative rule. All right. Second derivative rule is more of a pain in the keister in that if I substitute in 400, I'm going to write it as t to the half. All right. You guys agree? If I take v squared v dt squared, the second derivative, derivative of 2,000 is 0. Derivative of negative 400 t to the half, I think it's negative 200 t to the negative half. And if I evaluate that, at t equals 25, I plug in 25. You guys agree I'm going to get a negative number? So think about what the second derivative rule says. The second derivative rule says, hey, if the first derivative is 0 and the second derivative is negative, there is a maximum. You could have used that justification also. All right? One or the other for that last point. All right? Again, think about it. We are now through A and B, all right, and we are seven points in, so the last one has to only be worth two points, all right. So the last one is only two points. Again, if you're actually taking the AP, make a decision. Look at the clock. Decide you actually want to work C now. Or do you flip to the next problem and try to get the A's and B's? All right. Good test-taking strategy still. C, by the time the recovery device began removing oil, 60,000 cubic centimeters of oil had already been leaked. Write, but do not evaluate, an expression involving the integral that gives the volume of oil at the time found in Part B. You guys agree that the initial volume of oil, or the volume of oil at time zero, going to be 60,000 cubic centimeters. You notice there was no time on that. You guys agree? It wasn't cubic centimeters per minute. It was just that. So we know from the fundamental theorem of calculus, all right, we know that any time I want to do an integral of g of a, all right, it's going to start at, I'm going to make a g of b on my equation here. It's going to start at sum A plus the integral from A to B all right, of this function, or in this case, derivative, right? G prime T. Any time, fundamental theorem of calculus, any time I want to find a point in time, I can start from some initial condition and add the integral and the area under the curve from the integral to get that point. So, they say, hey, write but do not evaluate an expression that gives the bottom oil at the time found in part B. What's the time in B? Time, whoops. The time in B is 25. All right? So my time is V25, right? I want the volume at 25 minutes, but it's equal. I'm not going to write V0. I'm going to write the 60,000, the initial starting point. Plus what? Plus the integral from 0 to 25 of what? Well, of our dv dt. So I would write this as simply 2,000 minus rt dt. And that would give you the volume. All right? This was worth two points. The initial condition in this was worth a point. All right. Now, if you got the wrong limits, it didn't matter because it gave a point for the integrant, not the limit. So if you had the wrong answer in B, you could still get full credit for letter C. All right. If you had that in. Again, AP problems take a lot of practice. All right. The big thing is to get a variety of experience. And you would think I've done 
you know, 30 years of problems. You know, I started working on problems in 1980. I'd look at all those ancient problems because they're all puzzles. And every year they find a way to make a problem that tests your knowledge successfully. We need to do them all. We've got to keep working on why these work versus how, okay? The whys are more important. Keep practicing. Quiz.